Good morning, everyone. How are you? How many of you went to the dance last night? Yay. Thank, let's give a big shout out to DJ Buffet for uh, entertaining us uh, once again this year. He's pretty good, isn't he? I love the little rumble line that one snaked around the whole dance floor. So that was fun. Okay, I have a few announcements to make um, this morning. Um, if um, you participated in the CLA drawing, there was uh, a winner for their lounge chair. It's um, Isaiah Reese Windham. Isaiah Reese Windham. If you are here, um, please go to the CLA table, which is down this way, down left. Um, when you get out of the ballroom and they have a, a wonderful chaise lounge for you. I also wanted to remind you that session 22 this morning um, has switched with session 33 uh, to, uh, later today. So we're going to um, make that adjustment. They'll be um, in the rooms that they're designated for that time slot. CLA will also have another drawing. I forgot to mention that. Um, so stop by their table. Um, we're going to have some music and entertainment at lunch. So I, I really encourage you to um, to make sure you, you're here and you're enjoying some drumming music. Um, we also have our Native American dancers back this year. So during the first break after our keynote today, um, they'll be here in the uh, Barranca Lounge. So um, please make sure you stop by. They were just fabulous um, last year when everybody had a lot of fun. So uh, stop by there. Please make sure you support our micro businesses in the back. If you have gotten a gift, uh, a $5 voucher certificate, make sure you spend that before noon today. And um, there's just lots and lots of beautiful handcrafted items. So good time to shop for your holidays and birthdays. And then um, also wanted to let you know that our keynote from yesterday, Max Barrows, um, will be in the Friendship Lounge today from 10 to 10.45. So you've, um, we'll have a little meet and greet. So if you want to um, hang out with Max for a little bit, um, feel free to stop by. And he also has a session um, this morning too. So um, just wanted to let you know about that. And I think that's all the messages I have. Um, so let's let's get on with the show. Oops, sorry. Oh, uh, Cindy Bentley's um, books are also in the People First Friendship Lounge. I, the people were asking about that. So there, it's a great book if you haven't read it. All right. And now I'd like to introduce you to Ashley Matthews. I'm sure I don't really have to introduce you to Ashley Matthews. You all um, know Ashley from the conference. She's our board chair at the Wisconsin Board for People with Developmental Disabilities. Um, she's a mentor. She um, has lots of energy. She's a teacher. Um, and she um, part, does a lot of work for People First Wisconsin. So um, Ashley Matthews. All right, how are you guys doing today? Are you quite exhausted from the dance? I'm quite exhausted, I can say. All right, good morning, everyone. Say good morning. Thank you for coming to our Wednesday keynote. My name is Ashley, and as you say, can say, I'm an energizer bunny. And I am the chair of Wisconsin Board for People with Developmental Disabilities. I have also worked on the Living Well Project for more than five years. Mo one of the most important things that we have worked on at Living Well is rights education. Who wants rights in this audience? Who wants to be told what to do? Who wants to be told what to do? No, thank you. That's why we want rights, right? Rights are things that people can have or do. 
people with disabilities should be allowed to have and do all the things as people without disabilities. Do you agree? Let's give a round of applause on that one. Oh yeah, and I, and I want to do a different spiel. I know this is random, but make sure you um, come to the micro visit um, businesses back there. They need your support, the lilac room, everything else. Okay, so now I'm gonna get back on topic, guys. You know I'm not gonna get on top most of the time. People with disabilities should be allowed to do the same thing without people with disabilities. When people understand their rights, they live better lives, right? Who wants anybody telling them what to do? Can I have everyone shake their head? No, right? Can I hear it louder? That's why Living Well made three different guides, one for providers, which basically means agencies, one for family members, and a plain language rights guides for self-advocates. The people who I have the pleasure, and these people are fighters. Are you guys all fighters out here? Raise your hand, woo! Um, have worked on their rights either in their lives or at their jobs or, some, or sometimes both. They represent the different perspective. Self-advocates, raise your hand if you're a self-advocate out there. Awesome a family member, and provider. So I'm going to introduce Christy Schudeman, who is a really awesome person, by the way, is a self-advocate with People First of Wisconsin. Since 2022, Christy has used her skills and experiences to train other people with disabilities about their rights and how to advocate their, themselves to build the lives they want. All right. And then the next awesome person I have to introduce as Nancy Gabinski is the operations manager, which was, basically means she's Sydney's manager for plain language versions. At the People First of Wisconsin, Nancy has worked, has over 30 years of experience supporting people with disabilities. She is a proud parent of a person with autism. Isn't that awesome? A grateful graduate of Partners in Policymaking and one of the founders of Save Iris. Let's give her a round of applause for that one. Bobby Joe K K Kibson is a Community Day Vocational Manager at Opportunity Development Center. She has been with ODC for almost six years, and from the start, she is very passionate about making sure that each person they support, understands, and exercises their rights. And our monitor, which basically means she's going to be introducing everybody in plain language version because, you know, BPDD does a lot on plain language. For the, plan for the panel is Priscilla Battle. Priscilla is a self-advocate, also has a booth back there if you want to buy some things. Just putting a spiel for Priscilla. Um, with the Living Well Project and the peer mentor intern in the Wisconsin Pilot Peer Mentoring Program. Priscilla lives in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, where she has taught others about their rights and present across the state of Wisconsin and the importance of rights and her journey as a self-advocate. So let's give um, Priscilla a round of applause and I'm so excited for you to see these awesome people. All right, I'll let them get to it. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everybody doing today? Great. Glad to see you all. I just want to thank Ashley for that great introduction. We are excited to be here to have this conversation about rights and how we have all been right educated. Have, let me put my glasses on. <laughs> I'm excited to see you all. It's a different view from up here from sitting at the table. So we have all seen rights and education have impact on lives. Before we jump into our conversation, we want to show one of our videos on Know Your Rights. Welcome um, to the right. Self-Determination Channel. 
This is the first video in our Know Your Rights series. The rights we will be talking about are human rights. Every person in the world has human rights. That includes children and adults. This includes you. The law says that people with disabilities have the same rights as everyone else. This means you should be able to live a good life with respect and security. You have the right to make choices about how you live your life. Even if you get help making decisions or you have a guardian, you have the right to be heard and make choices. This is called self-determination. Human rights are protected by laws. The human rights that we will talk about in this series are your rights to live where you want and live with people that you want. Make your own choices about life. Control your money. Have privacy. Choose the services you want. Be free from people hurting you. Go to school. Good job. Get medicine and help from doctors. Decide your own schedule. Own the things you want. Say what you want and to express yourself. Have the faith you want. Vote. Talk to and be around the people you want. Rest and do things you like to do. Protection with the law and with your services. Good self-advocates make informed decisions. It is important that you know and understand your rights. To help you, we have created videos. Each video talks about a right you have. You will learn what you can do to make sure your rights are protected. You'll see what people who support you should do to help you. And you'll hear from our self-advocates about why each right is important to them. The links to these videos are in the information section below. Take time to watch the videos. Share them with people who support you. Understanding your rights is the first step in living a better life. Thanks for watching the self-determination channel. We need your support to keep the channel going. Give us a thumbs up if you like our videos. Subscribe to our channel, it's free. If you click on the bell icon, you'll be notified when we post a new video. All right, I was so excited. I forgot to introduce myself. Um, so I'm Priscilla Battle and I am a self-advocate um, with People First. And I teach the rights classes, Know Your Rights, and also the voting classes. So I'm excited to be a part of this movement. And we are going to move on. And I'm a small business owner. I do have a booth. Shout out to Ashley. She did say that. Thank you. So we are going to move on to Christy. Tell us a little about yourself and your journey as a disability advocate. Hi, I'm Christy. Um, I started back in 2019, I think, as a self-advocate leader and have really fallen in love with just advocating helping other people advocate for themselves. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I really love what I do. Tell us a little bit about yourself and your journey. Oh, can you hear me? I'm sorry. So Nancy is going to tell us a little about herself, her journey as a parent and an advocate for rights and rights education. Hello. Um, so I'm, I'm the parent of two teenagers, uh, Ben and Zoe. One's a senior in high school, and Ben is, and then Zoe's a junior. And my husband, Dan, and I are both um, proud um, partners in policymaking grads. Uh, 
shout out to all the partners out there. Um, and I, I worked with people with disabilities for over 30 years, as Priscilla said, um, I started out with like job coaching and job development. And then I was a county case manager um, with the old legacy waivers, they call them the community integration program. And then I was there for a transition to family care for a little bit. And I also worked in children's long term support um, as a care manager. Um, I've, I've worked for a mom and pop day program. Um, and I've been the guardian of a friend of mine through the end of life. Um, she received hospice at her adult family home. Um, and then I currently work for the great Cindy Bentley at People First Wisconsin. So she's my boss and she's awesome. Um, so, and, and I was pr very involved with the Save Iris movement. I, I guess, so you could say that when it comes to rights, I've, um, I've signed on different lines, right? When I, I've given out the rights and said, explain them and, and had somebody else sign. And I've also been on the receiving end and signed them. I was a care manager, or excuse me, I was a, uh, provided in home support to my parents um, through the end of their lives. And um, so I've had a lot of different, I guess, experiences in different roles. So of these, two ladies are so awesome to work with i've had the opportunity to spend a lot of time in the journey with both of them they have made it so much easier knowing them so now we have bobby joe so tell us a little about yourself and your journey as a disability advocate for rights and rights education Hello, um, I have been working for ODC for about six years, and it's been an amazing journey. It's an amazing company to work for because we strive for independence and making sure everybody's rights are heard with each person that we support. Um, being a part of the Living Well grant, ODC was a pilot site, and we um, still use the toolkits that we were given and with parents, staff, guardians, um, our clients daily to help and always remind them that they have rights. So we're not just saying it one time and then they forget or we're not continuously supporting them. Um, I also own an adult family home myself with my husband and I. So I personally practice these um, rights education on a daily basis, um, advocating for the people that live with us. Um, an interesting as well as I used to be a special ed teacher and it's just crazy to think that they didn't teach us that the people that we were going to be supporting uh, the importance of their rights as well. So I just think that this whole movement is amazing. Thank you, Bobby Joe. And with ODC, I am peer mentoring over there. Um, I'm an intern doing peer mentoring over there. So we're going to be working together and I'll have this great experience of sharing all of these rights with the people at ODC as well. So that is awesome. Thank you, ladies. Um, so Christy, who benefits from rights education and training? Everybody. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you're a person with a disability, a person who supports a person with a disability, everybody should know their own rights and the rights of other people. Thank you, Christy. Nancy, who benefits from rights education and training from your perspective? Um, I, I guess I, I agree with uh, Christy on that one that everybody benefits. Um, I, I think, you know, as a parent, it, it's been helpful to, to learn about rights um, from, you know, we all want our, I, I guess that I want the same things for my son, Ben, who's on the autism spectrum. I want him to have the same opportunities in life and the same rights as my daughter, Zoe. Um, and so, but for that to happen, um, the folks, people need to know about rights of people with disabilities, whether it be in special education services, doctors, um, really everybody that you come into contact with needs to know. Um, I would you know, uh, we, we started um, with, with Ben getting services and birth to three, and then we went on, you know, he's had an IEP since he turned um, three. <laughs> and then we've, we've had uh, children's long-term support waiver services as well. 
and intensive autism treatment services in our home. So I, I think all of all of those people that we've encountered along the way need to know about rights and they need to honor them. Testing, can you all hear me? All right, I am mic'd up appropriately. So, um, Bobby Joe, who benefits from rights education and training? That question's for you as well. Thank you, can you, yeah, can you hear me? Um, everyone, like everybody is saying, um, it's just interesting to know as well, working um, in the position I have, that there's also guardians that didn't realize that they're, um, the people they are guardians of or their children had rights. So. Hopefully in a little bit, I'll be able to share a story about someone um, that has rights now that didn't before because her guardian didn't even know that the adult family home that she was living at could not make her decisions for her. So it's just important that every, including what Nancy said, the um, doctors, um, case managers, social workers, um, brothers, sisters, everybody knows because it takes, you know, a village for for everybody and it just is so important that everybody knows because you have one person that's off track that might be the person that that person with disabilities goes to and it could totally change everything that they're trying to do. Thank you Bobby Joe. It is so important as everyone has said that everybody knows that they have rights with disabilities and without we sometimes get overlooked because people with disabilities, they seem to think we can't think for ourselves or do for ourselves. So it's important that everyone gets the message that we get to choose. Everyone has a right. So remember, when you think you can, you can. You may need assistance. So knowing your rights to know that you get the right to do everything that everyone else does is important. So remember that. And when you see someone else that think they don't have a right to do, you pass the message that you can too. Everyone help with advocacy. Um, so Christy, what does rights education mean? What kinds of activities have you been involved with around rights? Rights education is vitally important. It means know, everybody knowing that they have the same equal rights whether you have a disability or don't have a disability. What's the second question? You, right, uh, what kind of activities have you been involved with involved rights? So the activities I've done, I did the rights videos. Um, I've taught the rights booklet, the rights guides. Uh, I think, yeah, I serve on different boards, actually, <laughs> uh, making sure that everybody knows that everybody has the same rights. <laughs> Nancy, what is something you have learned by going through rights training and education? Well, I think that, you know, it it's very helpful to me to go through the partners and policy making training um, to learn about the disability rights movement more. And also just to be develop friendships with other parents and, and also other adult uh, friendships with adults with disabilities. Um, that, that was huge for me. And I, I learned so much from them and their experiences. And I, I know that uh, my, my kids have benefited um, from that these friendships that I've had. Um, I think now that Ben is, he's 17 and a half. So for all the parents out there, you know, that year between 17 and 18 is a little, uh, there's a lot to figure out, right? And what's been pretty shocking to me, even though it shouldn't be, is that um, when we've been, we went to a neurologist, for instance, um, Ben's neurologist had retired. And so we had to find a different one. And this neurologist, when we first walked in, was already asking about guardianship. She hadn't spoken to Ben yet. He hadn't said anything. Um, and she didn't say like, she didn't, it, it was just so strange. And as a parent, it's like, you wonder like, okay, when do you just like leave, right? When is it a bad <laughs> match? Um, and when is it an opportunity to educate? So I, I tried to talk with her about did you know that there's something called supported decision-making and, 
And, you know, there's other ways that you can support people with making decisions. And she, she, again, just sort of brought up guardianship and did I want to talk to a social worker? No, I don't. And, and so it ended up being this very awkward conversation. And then it, it led to me talking with Cindy and, and Phil a bit about the, that issue. And then people first now has a partnership with a grant, a community seed grant with the Medical College of Wisconsin, and we're exploring uh, how, whether doctors are informed about supported decision-making or not. And we're doing a survey and we're gonna be providing some education there. And we're discovering that really, yeah, they, they don't really know much about it. So I think that what the, the default or the go-to right away is to talk to people about guardianship. And so that's happened, but then it happened me us again. Ben had a functional screen recently for the children's long-term support waiver. He sat there and answered questions for an hour and 15 minutes. And he he was very he did a really great job answering difficult questions. And at the end, the and the case manager he did a good job asking the questions and having it be more conversational. But at the end, he still said to he's kind of looked down, he goes, and also, you know, you're gonna be 18. I want to talk with you about guardianship. And, and I just, I said, you know, here's the thing. And he goes, it's, it's just a way to help somebody make decisions. And, and I said, but there's also other options too. Did you know that the board with, for people with developmental disabilities has some really good information about support decision-making? I mean, and, and it was one of those things where it just keeps happening. And I, I'm so grateful to all of you, you all, cause like, I know what to say in those situations and I'm able to advocate better then. That was a long answer to a short question, sorry. That was a good answer to a short question. We thank you for sharing. And I want to point out how important it is for people to get involved. It starts with parents. You start with your own child, your own little person, speaking up and letting them know or letting people know that they have rights. You don't just jump in when you're an adult. You jump in, in in the early ages. And then we have advocates who are standing up for themselves and teaching other people how to advocate for themselves. So it, it starts really young and anybody can help anyone stand up for themselves. So we're encouraging everyone to have your voice, get the right information and use your voice for yourself and for other people. And of course, come about, come come aboard and join us and fight for advocacy. We would love to have everyone advocating for themselves and other people. So thank you. Our next question is for Christy. Um, this year's conference theme is a seat at the table. Nothing about us without us. How can rights education help people have a seat at the table? Rights education helps you know what your rights are, and that's all of them. <laughs> um, it, yeah. <laughs> it helped me by learn. Actually, when I started doing this kind of work, I didn't even know I had all those rights because nobody enforced that with me, and everybody just assumed that I needed help with things. Just never was talked about. So that really opened my eyes to that I have rights and that everybody has the same rights. How can rights education help people have a seat at the table? That's for you, Christy. It helps us have a seat at the table because we get a voice. It's our decisions. It's our life. We get to have a say in what happens. And it's not that hard of a concept. <laughs> okay. Bobby Joe, this question is for you. How can rights education help people have a seat at the table? Um, it helps them have a voice. Like um, Christy said, it helps them choose where they want to live, who to hang out with. Um, what they want to eat, what it helps them learn that what we know best isn't what's best, that they can have their own opinion, even if somebody tells them 
um, you know, this is really not the right choice. I feel that you really should do this because this and that could happen. But in their heart of hearts, they still want to make the other decision that they get to. They don't have to just do what someone without disability says is what's in their best interest. So I just, it's really important. Uh, thank you. Nancy, how can rights education help people have a seat at the table? Um, well, I think like in the case of um, my, my son, Ben, he had the opportunity to go through uh, the youth leadership forum training this summer, um, and he just got a lot out of it. So um, so an example is, um, and, and on a side note, he was in um, the Die Hard Award winner, Brett Mackey's group at YLF. And Cindy Bentley also um, helped me feel better because she was volunteering. So he was he was in good hands there. Um, but what what happened through his experience there is he just got so much more confidence and he started talking talking more um, about the future and seeing more possibilities for himself, whether it be college or different kind of employment, and also the need to take more responsibilities too at home, um, that that was tied together. And he actually went, had the opportunity to speak with a legislative staffer about the functional screen and his, his concerns about that, that they ask so many questions about what you can't do and that that doesn't help a person feel good about themselves or more confident. And he would like them to ask more about what support people need to do the things they want to do. So um, having that training um, helped him to advocate for himself and others. And so it, we're really grateful for the YLF training. And he he describes it as just, he, he describes it as life-changing for him. Thank you. This is for Christy. Can you give us an example of seeing a change in someone's life or perspective as a result of learning about their rights? So throughout teaching people about their rights, I've watched other people have the same discovery that I had, like, oh, we have all these rights and it's okay to ask for them and speak up if they're being violated. So it just, it's so important. <laughs> it is. So another question for you, Christy. So how has your own understanding of rights or your place at the table changed as a result of doing this work? My seat at the table has blown wide open. I have pretty much the whole table. <laughs> I went from not knowing my rights and being this shy little thing that wouldn't say anything to okay, now you're going to listen to me and you're going to hear what I have to say and I don't care if you like it or not, honestly. <laughs> Thank you. Nancy, can you give us an example of seeing a change in your family or your family's perspective as a result of learning about their rights? Yeah. Um, so I, I, I want to start. I also point out that before I came here today, I did ask Ben about what I could share with you. So um, he did give permission to me to be speaking with you today about his life. Um, so I, I guess one of the things that that I've seen with with him, um, we we went through a period where he had a lot of mental health struggles and he was suicidal and he ended up um, hospitalized at Rogers. Um, so he actually celebrated his 16th birthday at Rogers. Um, because he's awesome, he was like, hey, they had cupcakes and he made the best of it. But it was hard. And so he also went through a period then where like he was really upset one night at a concert um, that his sister was in and he took off and we didn't know where he was and we had to call the police and all uh, friends are searching for him and things like that. Um, you know, so it, it put us in this place of fear, right? And sometimes I think that when we're in a place of fear, that's when we feel like, oh, we need more control. We need more control. And, um, and I, I guess I can tell you as a parent, I make better decisions and I'm a better parent to my kids when I'm making decisions from a place of hope and possibility rather than a place of fear and control. Um, but I, I think that, you know, for us, um, 
you know, we got through that period with Ben and it was really hard and difficult, but we came through it. And he, I, I think then as we did, I had to kind of, you know, re retrain myself about not being so worried all the time. Right. And not feeling like if we're out of that place now, so I need to move on to this other place and join him where he's at, which is he was feeling good. He was in a good space. He could do more things independently in a safe way. And I needed to trust that he could do that. Um, I remember Cindy and I were in the car one day and, and um, heading to a meeting and he called and I'm like, Hey, you're on speaker. And he's like, I want to go for a run at the Brown Deer park. I'm like, Oh, I'm like, could you just, you know, run in the circle, do some laps in a, around our house? I'm not home and things like that. And Cindy is whispering to me, let him go. And then, um, and then I'm like, he goes, well, mom, I have life 360 on my phone. You'll know where I am. Um, and Cindy's like, let him go. And I'm like, I'm like, oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. You can go, you know, bring water. And I'm like listing off all the things. So but I had to, to move to that. And I, I think sometimes um, it's hard. It's hard for the person to feel capable and ready um, when they're in a better space. And it's hard for the people in their lives sometimes. Um, but we have to keep trying. And um, that because they need to be out in the community, they need those connections. Um, so I, I would say that, that that happened. And I have to say now he's on cross country and he's like running really well. And um, you know, you hear a lot about why the, the community is safer for people with disabilities. And I, and it's like, well, why is that? And I can tell you why that is. Why that is, is because um, I, I got a text not that long ago from another mom saying, hey, you know, I saw Ben running through Clutch Park. Just want to make sure you knew. Yep. Thanks. Takes a village. She's like, always. I got a text from um, a, a friend of the, a, a girl in the neighborhood saying, hey, I saw Ben running. Da, da, da. Um, just wanted to double check you knew. Yep. Thanks, Rebecca. It was her parents that found him in the park the night that the police were looking for him. So she wanted to watch out for Ben and make sure that I knew where he was. And I didn't take that as intrusive. I, I found that just really um, reassuring. But it, it takes a community um, being involved and caring and knowing people and watching out for them. Thank you. <laughs> Bobby Joe, this is for you. Can you give us an example of seeing a change in someone's life or perspective as a result of learning about their rights? Yes, um, we had a new person come to our day center at ODC and due to us giving um, the rights education brochures and teaching them about their rights as a new person coming in, the guardian of this woman had learned that her sister's rights were being taken away at the house that she lived at. Her sister was sad. She didn't smile. Um, she was getting very sick. She was picking her skin all over where it was bleeding. She was having behaviors. Her psoriasis was out of control. And after ODC teaching her this race education, she talked to her sister more and her sister opened up because she was scared to talk to her sister because she thought she would get in trouble with the house. And they learned how miserable this woman was. So they took her out of that AFH, put her in a new one. And now she smiles all day long. She's laughing. Her, she's had zero psoriasis flare ups. Um, she doesn't pick her skin. She, um, it's really great. And some of the rights that she got taken away where she had to go to bed at seven every night, no matter what, Monday, every day of the week, even if she wasn't tired, she wasn't allowed to chew gum because she got it in her hair one time. She couldn't spend any of her money any any time. She didn't know where it was. And it just really matters that those decisions that you think it's not a big deal. They're going to bed at seven. I think they're tired. They need to go. It, it's not. She goes to bed at 10 p.m. every night now. Not a minute before, not a minute after. She's 10 o'clock on the dot. That's what she chooses. And um, she makes jokes. She's just, she's so happy. And she just, ODC is just, she said it, it, it saved her and she, and knowing her rights. So, um, yeah, it's amazing. Thank you. Those are great answers. And if I could answer the questions myself as the changes for me as a person with, disability it's important it my life has changed being a part of this because I really didn't have a voice before this for myself before 2019 I was able to 
advocate for other people. I was working life coaching and I got sicker in 2019 and I started being able to do less. And then once it was my turn to need support and to do, I didn't know how to ask for it. I didn't want people to know. And then they were trying to put me in a group home. They didn't want me to work. They didn't want me to do anything but just sit in the house and just be still. So becoming a part of people first, um, thanks to, I was with CRC at the time, and she saw a place for me there. And I'm just like, I wouldn't fit in. I wouldn't, that wouldn't work for me. So Cindy said, yes, come aboard. And we did this. And now I'm talking about these rights. Um, I'm claiming the disability because before I didn't want people to know. I didn't carry my walker. And it's just, you have a right to, I can bring my walker. I cannot bring my walker because I have good days and bad days. And you get to decide. I get to go out in public. I get to work. I'm working. And it makes a difference. So we get the voice out there that we have choices. Everybody have choices. And you have a right to do these things. So these four years have been life-changing for me. It has been. I, I feel so alive. I love being here. I love helping. I love getting the word out. So make sure that Everyone fights for their rights. I got new friends. <laughs> Make sure everyone fights for their rights. It's an amazing place to be in your know who you are and being around your peers to help support you and to see that everyone is winning. Okay. I did that. Thank you. Okay. One more. So we are almost done. And Chris. See, if there is one thing you are hoping that people in the audience remember about rights today, what would it be? So I had this discussion with Caitlin while I was preparing for this. There's a meme that goes around Facebook that disabled people with disabilities are taught how to interact and do in society and live in the world but nobody's taught how to help us or deal with us. And that's not okay. Why do we get the brunt of the work? Like, it should be an equal partnership between people without and people with disabilities. Bobby Joe, if there is one thing you are hoping that people in the audience remember about rights today, what would it be? It would be that if you wouldn't tell your neighbor not to do something, you shouldn't tell that person not to do something. So for example, if you wouldn't go up to your neighbor and say, you know, I really think that you shouldn't be drinking a regular soda. You should really be drinking a diet soda because, you know, it could have some health issues and you've talked about, you know, wanting to lose weight or whatever the case may be. You wouldn't go up and tell your neighbor that. That is their choice. They get to do what they want. So if it's not something you go up and tell your neighbor a choice they should make, it's not something you should go up and tell someone with a disability or anybody for that matter. All right. Thank you. Nancy, if there was one thing you're hoping that people in the audience remember about right today, what would it be? I, I guess you, you, you guys covered it really well, <laughs> but I, I would just say that uh, just the importance of having the people with these lived experiences at the table um, and, and sharing and um, not just as a, like you check off a box that you, you had somebody come, right. But really involved and really making decisions. And um, that, that whenever you're providing supports and services to people that it's in plain language and that they understand what their rights are, and um, that way they can exercise them. And for me, the one thing that I'm hoping people will take away is um, we did a session on yes and that we have limitations, but there is a way for us to have an, uh, the ability. We have disabilities, but we have the ability to do almost everything. There is a way to get it done. Get the support you need, speak up, and if you want to do something, it may not look like somebody else's thing, but it could look like yours. And there is a way with the right support and the right planning, and it may look a little different.
sure, but make sure that what you want to do is what you want to do. So you have a seat at that table and you get together and let people know what it is that you want for your life, what makes you feel alive. And you make that plan and you make it happen for you and not for anybody else's happy and enjoy your life because we all deserve to be happy. Okay. Um, so thank you. Um, it has been a great panel that being up here with you all. And we are going to have one more video to play. So it'll just be short and quick. You're watching the Self-Determination Channel. Today on Know Your Rights, we're talking about privacy. Do you know? You have privacy rights. Privacy is the right to be left alone, free from being watched, not being disturbed. Privacy is also the right to control your personal information. If you want to share information with staff, family members, friends, or other people, that's up to you. If you don't want to, that's up to you too. There are things you can do to protect your privacy rights. Decide what information you want to keep private and let people in your life know. Speak up when you want privacy. If you want time to yourself, want to be left alone to visit with a friend, or talk on the phone, that's your right. If someone does not give you the privacy you want, tell someone who can help. I'm Christy. I live in Watertown in my own apartment. Privacy is very important to me. I have the right to choose who sees my information. So this would include any of my contact information or information about my personal cares. I don't want it broadcasted to the whole world. So I need only the people that are involved with those things, such as caregivers or my family, to know about my needs. It's also important for me that my personal needs are done in a private manner. I did have an experience where I had a caregiver living with me and that was very intrusive to my privacy. I made the choice to change that situation because I didn't feel comfortable. I'm Camille. I live in La Crosse, Wisconsin. I live in my own apartment. It's important that people don't come into your apartment or living space. I've lived in places where people have come in, stolen stuff, moved stuff, and um, disrespected my space and my late mother's space. But now I live in a great place where uh, people have to leave a notice of entry when they come in the apartment, which makes me feel respected and dignified. I'm Ashley. I'm from Lake Tomahawk, Wisconsin. I don't like people borrowing my clothes. It makes me irritated. And I don't like people touching my food with mayonnaise or ranch on their hands because I won't eat it because of my sensory issues. I have to tell people about it before I get mad. I have the right to make these choices and so do you. People who support you should respect your right to privacy. They should ask you what information you want to keep private. Unless you say it's okay, they shouldn't read your mail your messages, or go through your things. They should knock before entering your house or the room you are in. They should always help you with personal care in private places. Privacy gives you space to be yourself. It gives you control over information about you. It's your right. Check out all the videos in our Know Your Rights series to learn about other rights you have. The links to the videos and other information on your rights are in the description below. Next on. I just want to add one more thing that I'm very proud to be part of the first human rights committee um, in Wisconsin. ODC has paired with APTIV and we make sure that due process is in place before making any rights modifications. 
So I just think that's a huge step in this movement. Okay. Um, thanks for sharing that with us, Bobby Joe. And thank you all for all the information we've shared. You all did a great job. <laughs>